THE SEAS ARE RISING. THE ARCTIC ICE IS BREAKING UP. THE POLAR BEARS ARE DYING. COASTAL CITIES ARE FLOODING. DOOMSDAYERS ARE SAYING WE'RE HEADED FOR A WORLDWIDE CATASTROPHE BECAUSE OF WHAT THEY CALL GLOBAL WARMING. A NUMBER OF SCIENTISTS AGREE IT'S BECOME ORTHODOXY, SAYING THAT HUMANS ARE TO BLAME FOR THIS PHENOMENON. BUT AUTHOR STEVE GORHAM SAYS THAT'S JUST NOT TRUE. CLIMATISM IS THE BELIEF THAT MAN-MADE GREENHOUSE GASES ARE WREAKING HAVOC WITH THE CLIMATE AND DESTROYING THE PLANET. CLIMATISTS SAY THE GASES FROM INDUSTRY ARE WARMING THE EARTH SO MUCH THAT THE ICE CAPS ARE MELTING, THE OCEANS ARE RISING, AND THE POLAR BEARS ARE THREATENED WITH EXTINCTION. IF THERE'S A HEAT WAVE, A COLD SNAP, STRONGER THAN USUAL HURRICANES, DROUGHTS OR FLOODS, THE CLIMATISTS SAY IT'S ALL BECAUSE OF MAN-MADE CLIMATE CHANGE. AND THEY SAY IF WE DON'T CURB OUR EVIL, CARBON-EMITTING WAYS, THE EARTH IS DOOMED. BUT STEVE GORHAM SAYS NOT SO FAST. THE ENVIRONMENTAL RESEARCHER AND AUTHOR OF THE MAD, MAD, MAD WORLD OF CLIMATISM SAYS THAT SCIENCE POINTS TO NATURAL FACTORS, NOT HUMAN ACTIVITY, AS THE CAUSE OF GLOBAL WARMING. AND HE CALLS CLIMATISM THE GREATEST GLOBAL DELUSION IN HISTORY. Well, THIS IS THE BOOK, THE MAD, MAD, MAD WORLD OF CLIMATISM. PAPERBACK IS AVAILABLE WHERE BOOKS ARE SOLD, AMAZON AND OTHERS. VERY INTERESTING, VERY INTRIGUING AND VERY WELL LAID OUT. AUTHOR AND ENVIRONMENTAL RESEARCHER STEVE GORM IS WITH US RIGHT NOW. AND WELCOME, STEVE. GOOD TO SEE YOU. GOOD MORNING, PAT. Uh, gr GREAT TO JOIN YOU. THANKS FOR HAVING ME ON. ALL RIGHT. TELL ME ABOUT THIS THING. Uh, IT SEEMS TO BE ORTHODOXY THAT uh, AN INCONVENIENT TRUTH GOT AL GORE THE NOBEL PRIZE. IT DID. WHAT DO YOU SAY ABOUT THAT? Well, the world jumped to a conclusion. In 1988, Dr. James Hansen, a scientist at NASA, yeah. came before Congress. He said he was 99% sure that the world was warming and mankind was causing it. That very, very same year, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change was formed, and they found mankind was the cause of global warming. And then just three and a half years later, 41 nations signed a treaty mm -hmm. at the Rio de Janeiro Earth Summit. And for the last 20 years, our political leaders have been arguing over how much and when to reduce greenhouse gases. But more and more evidence shows that man's influences are very small. What's doing it? You know, I understand the temperature in Mars is going up, and we don't have any SUVs on Mars. How come the temperature in these planets is going up? What's causing that? Well, the, the sun, I believe, is probably the overwhelming factor in climate change. <laughs> okay. Not that trace gas carbon dioxide. All right. Well, why? Why is this? What, 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 uh, is it sunspots or solar flares? What's, what's... Well, scientists don't really know. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's still one of the mysteries. Uh, uh, we're very uncertain about what causes climate change. But it does appear that uh, carbon dioxide, which is just a trace gas, mm -hmm. is very small. And the dominant factors are the sun, weather and clouds, uh, the effects of op ocean cycles, ocean currents, and natural cycles. Mm -hmm. And that's what's driving global warming or global cooling. And uh, man-made influences are small. Now, is this one of the hotter years, or is this normal? I mean, is this the way it's been over the millennia? It is one of the hotter uh, periods over the last 400 years. Uh -huh. But we've been coming out of a period called the Little Ice Age, right. when the Thames River froze solid at London every year. Uh, but we've had warmer periods in the past. We had a Roman warming uh, 2,000 years ago when the Romans wore those little skirts, and uh, <laughs> you, could, you could grow olives in Bonn yeah. and wine in England. And then about a 1,000 years ago, during the medieval warm period, the Vikings settled southwest Greenland. Uh, they named uh, Newfoundland Vinland because uh, wine was growing there. So we've had warmer periods in the past, and this uh, present temperatures are not abnormal. They're not abnormal. No. What will happen? I mean, if it gets warmer, it is getting warmer. What does it mean? I mean, the Arctic is open up. Ships can travel around up there. They can explore for oil and gas and so forth. Well, what are the dangers about all this? Well, it's, it's uh, very interesting, and, and a lot of things are proclaimed. Uh, storms are getting uh, worse and a lot of other things. But the periods in history show that uh, warmer periods have actually been better for civilization. Mm -hmm. We seem to have less extreme weather. We have longer growing seasons. And we have more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere now, which is actually greening the planet. It's greening the it's planet. greening the planet. That's good. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we, we won't start. Well, well, what was the time in Europe when there were terrible famines? Uh, was that the Little Ice that Age? That was the Little Ice Age from 1300 to 1800. Okay. 
And, 500 uh, years. For about 500 years, the population of Iceland decreased by about 50%. Yeah. And actually, uh, there were many people in the Middle Ages that were blamed for uh, causing mm. the cold temperatures and the poor crops, and they, they, labeled, them. they labeled them witches. They yeah. burned them, yeah. And so today, we, we blame it on our neighbor's uh, SUV or, or uh, a power plant. It's a little bit of a medieval thing, unfortunately. Let's hope we don't burn the officials of VEPCO or any of these power companies. Well, what should we do about all this, or should we do anything? Well, we need to adapt, like civilization has done in, in uh, history. Mm -hmm. uh, when we have hurricanes and storms, those are going to come and go. Uh, tornadoes, droughts, and floods, that's part of the natural um, effects of nature and the natural variation. We need to adapt to those. Mm -hmm. But we need to put our resources towards solving the real problems of the world, hunger and disease and poverty and lack of electricity, rather than fighting a phantom battle uh, trying to stop the climate oh, from phantom. changing. The, the, apparently there was some researchers in England who were actually jiggering the figures. They were lying and, and putting out false data. Uh, could you address that? Well, you're referring to Climate Gate. Climate Gate. Yes, correct. there were some emails released uh, either by a hacker or a uh, whistleblower, really, we don't know at this point, from the University of East Anglia right. in the United Kingdom. And they were the uh, leading providers of Earth's temperature data. And the, the emails were not, not very good. They showed uh, poor science. They showed uh, people that were willing to, uh, there was a bias toward the theory of man-made global warming. Uh, they were trying to stop, uh, uh, interfere with the peer review process a little bit. Uh, they were avoiding Freedom of Information Act uh, requests and a lot of other things. Not, not very good science. Uh, I think they were sincere, they were trying to save the planet, but it looks like uh, um, there was a lot of problems with the temperature data sets. Are they, they were falsifying the data? Is that a, a well, there's, there's sort of a bias. I, I don't know yeah. if I'd want to say, there were, there were some deliberate attempts to truncate things and do some other things, but, okay. but um, uh, again, I think those people were sincere, they thought it was a good cause. Uh, the problem is, though, that uh, we haven't had warming now for 16 years. And uh, all of the climate models are wrong. People should be re rejoicing in Bangladesh and the Maldive Islands and New York City and San Francisco. That's unlikely that we're going to see catastrophic ocean level rise. You know, part of the problem, of course, is people build their houses on lovely beaches, and beaches are subject to hurricanes and erosion. The same thing with the overcrowding in the cities. We, we've we've overstressed the planet in certain areas, haven't we? Yeah, there's, there's, uh, we're much more vulnerable to storms than we were in the past. Uh, because of building near the oceans, yeah. population in cities and other sorts of things. So the, the damage levels go up. But if you look at the actual trends of storm data, you see that uh, we don't have more hurricanes than we had uh, in the last century, et cetera. Uh, you've come out and said this. Has the scientific community banded together against you, or they, they just quiet and let you write your thing? And that's well, I, uh, uh, I have gotten a lot of flack, yeah. as many other skeptics have. And, um, for example, a, uh, a picture was posted on the website of San Jose State University three months ago, uh, which showed the head of the Department of uh, Meteorology and Climate Science holding a match under my book. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, so. about 12 different articles were written and went all over the web. And uh, they have pulled down that picture and apologized. But uh, there's a lot of intolerance in universities today for the, the view that uh, uh, climate change is natural. And mm -hmm. that's what the evidence, evidence seems to show. The sun, the sun. I said, you know, the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, go to Mars. They, they need to go to Mars to see what's happening in Mars. <laughs> yeah. No SUVs in Mars. Well, listen, thank you for this book, and thank you for what you're doing. And um, it's available, yes, Amazon, where? Bookstores, Amazon, um, my website, uh, climatism.net. All right. And uh, yeah. uh, Publishers Weekly called it a uh, colorful and amusing but science-based look at mankind's obsession with global warming. Colorful, amusing, so science-based. All right. Well, Steve, at, Gould, at ladies and gentlemen, you'll find this book interesting. And uh, uh, don't be scared and vote against any new cylindras because we don't need them.